everyone, I'm Lucas with Hanson Media, and today I'm gonna elaborate more on the trim pads video that I made for After Effects uh, sometime in the past year or so. Um, but let's just jump into it. Here I have um, a After Effects composition with a cell phone graphic uh, in, in there. Um, and I added the trim pads effect to it. I created outlines, added the trim pads effect, and when I move the end uh, property, it does not give the desired effect that I want. Uh, this is a problem that I run into a lot, um, working with different illustrators um, and animating uh, different vectors from them. And so in order to fix this, uh, I found a solution that works most of the time. Uh, it works better on simple shapes than it does with more complex shapes. Um, but we'll use it on this cell phone icon here first. What we're gonna wanna do is make a duplicate, which I already have. Um, I've layered out my graphic, um, and this is super important because when working in After Effects, um, AI composition or AI files come over as compositions or as merged footage, um, but if you merge, it, merge all the layers as footage, you can't really do anything with it, and um, when it's in a composition, if everything's in one layer, you're not gonna be able to animate all the different aspects of it very easily. So before we import something into After Effects, we need to layer it out. So here I have the outline of the phone, the screen, and then all the little buttons. Uh, I've labeled it as dots, but you can label it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter as long as you know what it is. So first you make a duplicate of the shape that you want to get rid of. And then right here, as you can see, um, there is no middle line here, indicating that this is a shape rather than a path. And this is the problem. Uh, After Effects sees this as a shape, and so when it tries to trim a path, it gets kind of confused and plays that uh, animation that we saw earlier. And so to remedy this, what we need to do, like I said, duplicate the shape, delete, the uh, points on the outside of the path of the shape. It kind of creates a weird shape, a weird fill, uh, just for the time being, we'll fix it right now. So we have our duplicated outline and we'll make it a different color just so that we can differentiate better. I like using a blue color. Um, and so we'll select it over here and then we'll bring up the stroke now It's important that each that your the stroke that you've duplicated is below the or the the object that you duplicated is below um, the new stroke so that you can see um, Where it starts to overlap and so what we want to do is overlap the stroke all the way until this side gets to the same size as the original shape. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit off, but it's enough that you won't really know the difference. If you really, really want to, you can do half a, half a point of a stroke, or let's see if we can do 0.25, and it almost gets there. I'll actually just leave it at 22. Nice round number. So, now that you have your stroke, or yeah, you have your stroke, uh, outlined fairly close to uh, to where it was. What we can do now is uh, divide that by two. And if you didn't know, you can do math in this stroke, uh, in this little stroke uh, option up here. So 22 divided by two is 11. And so what we'll do is we'll outline this stroke and now we'll do the opposite and delete the inside of this duplicated shape now. Okay, so I have this semi-clean uh, fill here. So what I'm gonna do is make that a stroke and then bring it all the way up to 11 so that it just about matches the same stroke as the shape and then this shape has rounded corners on it right here. And so what I'll do is round corners the same on my stroke. 
and there we go. It's about the same uh, as the original shape. And so you can see right there, about the same there. So I'm gonna do that for the screen as well. Command or Control C and Control F will hide the first or the bottom layer. And then we'll get rid of this outline. Then we'll turn it back on and make sure that this is a different color. And then we're gonna go up to 22 again to keep consistency within our icon. And then we will divide it by two, which will give us 11. We'll outline this stroke and then delete the inside, uh, the inside path there then we will swap these two. And then as you can see, we have uh, a stroke in the middle. And so then we'll bring this up to 11. And we have something that resembles the original shape. And now to get the corners just right, we'll round them just a little bit. And there we go. Now we have a stroke that is exactly like the previous shape on both shapes. So this is a pretty ugly looking icon right now, but we will make it the same color. And there we are. So now we can take this into After Effects and start animating it properly. All right, so we'll bring our Illustrator file into After Effects and import it as a composition. That way it retains its layers and we'll open that up. It's now labeled as Cell Phone 2. Here's the original cell phone composition that has the shape of uh, shape layers instead of paths. And so what we're gonna do is select all of these, go over to create, uh, right click and then go to create and create shapes from vector layer. And I'm gonna hold down control or command and hit the right bracket to bring all of them to the top. And then I will hide the rest of these so they don't interfere with our timeline. I'll bring this down and add the trim paths effect. And then once we adjust the end, we now have the desired effect. So I'll do some quick animations here, add a keyframe, go forward a second, add another keyframe, and I will add some easy ease to these and have a little bit, a little bit more easing in there. So now the path animates like this and we'll add another one on or we'll add another trim pads effect on the screen and it should do the same thing now this is a good opportunity to showcase the offset because we can change this offset to be different so that when we we make it 180 so that instead of going from the bottom right corner or from starting from the bottom right corner it starts from the top left and so we'll add a keyframe at about 20, add another keyframe at the 120 mark and close it and do the same thing. Add some easy ease and give it a little bit more easing on the end. There we are. And so something else that happens with Illustrator and After Effects is that this stroke does not match this stroke. Now, if you look, this one has rounded edges or rounded um, ends because we made that happen in the Illustrator file. If you didn't do that for all of the strokes, you can come down here into stroke and change it from butt cap to round cap. So now if we look at the square, it'll have a rounded cap instead of the original uh, butt cap. So we have the phone and then the screen, and then we can add in those dots and I didn't make each dot an individual layer so that means that each of these groups acts as one dot so right now I have the bottom right one selected and the middle bottom left bottom and so on and so forth all the way until this top right one or top left one <laughs> Okay, so now I went into each individual group, which is each individual dot, and 
change the transform scale property to be from zero to 100 so that each of these animates in with scale. And what I can do is change these. So if I wanna go from top left to bottom right, I can add, I can move all of these over a few frames and keep doing that. Two frames each layer, or each group rather, until we get something that looks off. There we are. Until we get something that we want. So here, they all animate in really nicely. And now we have our cell phone animating in. So I'm gonna hit U to look at all the keyframes in the timeline. And I think I wanna adjust when the screen comes in so that it all ends at about the same time. So now if we go over to comp one, we'll get rid of this first cell phone comp, add in cell phone two, and now our cell phone animates in. So if I wanted to refine this a little bit, I could, and I could have these two take a little bit longer to come in like that. They're about the same. I could have these take a little bit longer to come in as well. And if you hold down Alt, it adjusts each keyframe individually. Makes for just a little bit smoother, a little bit slower animation. Uh, it just really depends on what you want. Hopefully this helps a little bit, and if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover, please let me know. Until next time.